just, uh, we give you this moment, this moment in time, where uh, we can just declare that you have us, you keep us in your hand, and you take care of us, and we're so grateful. God, be with the folks here today that declare your love and lordship in their lives today. Let there be peace in this place and in each heart. And uh, let us all celebrate and be inspired by our brothers and sisters and remember why we follow you, remember why we are grateful, and uh, we just thank you for this opportunity to declare loudly that you are good and you are loving and that we belong to you. And we thank you for this and everything that you're going to do today in this service and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Man, it's good to be here. To be in this space, to be worshiping God, to be in this space together, but knowing that there are many other people online watching this service and joining with us in heart, in spirit, and they're pretty excited to be here and watching online because we're celebrating a really special day. Today is Baptism Sunday, and we know that God is at work. God has been at work because people are being baptized. That's the the fruit of what God is doing. We know that God is doing great things because we're seeing it. It's being demonstrated. But did you know that it's not only Baptism Sunday, it is the first Sunday of Advent. And uh, we usually light candles, and there's that first candle, and it's the candle of hope. And instead, we're baptizing people, and tell me, is that not a message of hope? Isn't that a message of hope? You know what? We're not lighting candles. We got people. We got people being baptized as a sign of the hope they have in Jesus Christ. It's a hope that we share. And so it's wonderful uh, to be doing that and bringing these two things together. I would say it's a coincidence, because I didn't plan it to work this way, but I think God had a plan. I know God had a plan, and so we're seeing the fruit of that right now. We're going to open up the scriptures as we always do. We're looking at the book of Matthew. We're looking at the last two verses of the book. So we're looking at Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 19 and 20. 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let us pray. Holy God, we hear in this text that you are with us to the very end of the age. And it moves us to know that we're not alone but that you care for us, that you love us, that you see us and in the challenges we're facing. Lord, and that you have brought these people, we read about baptism in this text, these wonderful candidates for baptism. You've brought them to this point. Lord, we are so thankful for that. And just ask as we get into this word, Lord, you would soften our heart toward the message you have for us, Lord, that you would open my mouth, that you would open our ears, Lord, to hear this this important uh, truth for us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's this story of a husband and wife. And this husband and wife were both doctors. One was a doctor of the church, and the other was a doctor of medicine. And a lot of people would come to their, to their home and would knock on the door, and they had a maid, and the maid would answer the door. And the people would often ask for the doctor. Is the doctor home? And uh, the maid had this interesting reply. She said, uh, would you like the one who preaches or would you like the one who practices? And, uh, and I, I'm thankful that to hear today, we have people that are preaching, but not only preaching, not only telling you their testimony and the story of God in their lives, but also practicing. They're doing both. They're bringing both of these things, wonderful things together in a demonstration of what God has done in their lives by being baptized. So baptism is this wonderful activity in the life of an individual. 
Of course, if it's, it's in an individual. It's also within a family. You know, a lot of people that are being baptized today, they have parents and friends and family that have been praying for them for a long time. And so this is the fruit of a lot of that uh, wonderful work that has been done. So it's a family thing. It's also um, a community thing. God is at work in our community, and we're getting to participate in this baptism. You'll note, in, in, uh, if you ever ask me about baptism, my theology of baptism, one of the things I say is really important is that we don't baptize people by themselves. It's not like you would show up midweek and come up and I would baptize you. Rather, I always want to baptize in community because in community, we, uh, this is a communal event. It's something that brings joy to all of us. Where conversion, while it is the most important event in, in the life of an individual, it is with an individual. It's not something that we can easily celebrate as a group, and maybe there's one or two other people there, but we can all celebrate what God has done when they are baptized. So baptism is uh, an important time when the community gathers to celebrate God's Holy Spirit bearing fruit in someone's life. And celebrating God moving, I would say, right here at Lakeshore St. Andrews. Knowing God is moving in our midst is a, a great thing. And uh, you would think that would mean that being baptized or following God's easy. But being baptized rightly is no easy thing. You think about these people, these, these, these wonderful people that are being baptized. They have to get onto camera and they have to tell the truth about what's going on in their lives. They have to be transparent. They have to be honest about these challenges they faced, about how God met them where they were. And hey, this is, this is a difficult thing. And then on top of that, they have to get up here and get wet. And that's, that's pretty difficult, right? They have to get up and get wet while you guys all stay dry. And they have to come up, you know, and if they've quaffed their hair on a regular basis, then their makeup's always perfect, and they have to, now they have to go into the water, come out, and what do they look like? A drowned rat, you know, so we, we, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, you have to be honest and willing to be transparent in front of other people. I would say that is proof alone that God is at work, that people are willing to come up and to participate in this kind of, this kind of thing. And I want to say thank you to those being baptized that you allowed God to work in you in this way, and that you had the courage to follow him. So let's jump into the text, verse 19. It's very clear here in verse 19 that being baptism isn't your wonderful optional extra. It's not like, well, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus, but I'm not going to get baptized. Jesus doesn't actually give us that option. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In other words, baptizing them is part of making them disciples. If you want to make somebody a disciple, you have to tell them about Jesus, they have to accept Jesus, and then they have to be baptized. That's what it means to be a, a believer it's, and to be a follower. So Jesus makes it really clear, but some people still think, uh, you know, I'm not sure if we need to do it in the church anymore. It stops people from coming to church or, you know, people don't want to become members because they have to be baptized. And these are good thoughts. These are challenging thoughts. And I'm hoping that by looking at the meaning of baptism today, uh, we might get a little bit more understanding of what's going on. It may address some of these questions people have. So today we are uh, practicing what is called believer's baptism. Now, we practice other modes of baptism as well, but today we are practicing believer's baptism. In other words, people aren't showing up and just saying, well, you know, I think it's a really good idea to get wet. It's a really good idea to come up here because, ah, I've been going to church all my life. I think I might as well, well do it. Uh, people aren't saying, well, you know, I, you know, my friend's doing it, so therefore I'm doing it. We've investigated, we've interviewed these wonderful candidates, and none of them are doing it simply because they've reached a certain age, and that's what you do at that age. None of them are doing it for that reason. They've all had a personal encounter and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and they are responding to that. And that brings us to our first point. The first thing that baptism is, is a response to God the Father. It's a response to what the Father has been doing, not just recently. Now, I think sometimes people think that God gets surprised when they make a decision. God knew that these people would be on this platform being baptized. When? Before the creation of the world. Friends, God knew that you would be sitting in this pew 
that you would be online with us today from before the creation of the world. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He is, he is this God that is over all, knows all, all-powerful, all-knowing. So God is doing all of these great things behind the scenes, and what we see here is a response to that. I love what Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 4 to 6 says. It says this, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his good pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So this is us today, this is these candidates today saying yes to God. God had a plan, but we need to respond uh, to the plan. Is it wonderful to hear little babies? Oh, man, I love that. It's music to a pastor's ear. So don't worry. If you've got kids, it's okay. It's okay if they make noise because that just tells us we're alive here at the church, right? You know, that when we hear children, it's a wonderful thing. It's a gift of God. So thank you for them. Um, It is good to know that God has got a plan for us. He's got a plan, and he is doing great things, and it is a plan that came from the beginning, right from the beginning. And we're just agreeing with God. We're saying, yes, God. Baptism is a good thing. I don't necessarily know why, but I know that you started it, and that's your plan for me. Now, as alluded to earlier, uh, people cannot follow God in their own power. There's this weird kind of thinking that people get that Jesus meets me at my salvation. God meets me uh, when I come to know him, and then it's my job to follow God after. I do it all by myself. I don't need any help. You know, I just work at it. I get good habits. That is completely false. You cannot follow God even one step after becoming a Christian without the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes on you. Well, he's he's moving in your life before you become a Christian. You're baptized into him when you become a Christian, and then you live out your life in the power of that Spirit. God is all things in helping you uh, be that Christian that he's called you to be. Baptism is a sign of God's work, the sign of the Holy Spirit's work in someone's life. And it's a sign of their desire to be a disciple of Jesus. I love what, I love what Acts, chapter, Acts chapter 10 says. Acts chapter 10, of verse 47. Then Peter said, surely no one can stand in the way of these Uh, these people being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So in other words, God has worked by the Holy Spirit in someone's life, and as a response, they're baptized. Baptism is a spirit-led event that reenacts the complete cleansing of the believer through their faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to talk, I want to talk a little bit about what salvation is for a moment. You know, because what we're re-imaging when we're being baptized is salvation. So it's important to know what salvation is. Salvation is nothing less than the union of Jesus Christ and the believer. Jesus Christ in yourself. They come together. They become one. Jesus is in you, and you are in Jesus just as Jesus is in the Father, and the Father is in the Son. Isn't that amazing? There's a spiritual union that takes place, and what we're doing is we're symbolizing that in baptism. That's why baptism is so important. It's important that we go down into the water and we come back up. Why? Because we want to be identified not just with Jesus, but also his death and resurrection. So when someone goes down into the water, they're symbolizing when Jesus died. And, and then we die. We die to the old self, to that sinful self that we once were, that, that path that we were following, that path of death. And then Jesus came up out of the grave. He came out of the grave and now lives eternally with the Father, right? So do we. Only through our union with Jesus. If Jesus hadn't died and resurrected, we couldn't die and resurrect. So it's our union with him. We, we connect with him, we go down into the grave, and we come up alive to live a new life with God for eternity. This is a big event that is happening here. I love what uh, Paul says in the book of Romans, Romans chapter three and four, or uh, chapter, uh, chapter six, verses three and four. 
Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might have new life. New life. The people here on the stage are letting you know they're never going to be the same. Something has happened, and they've been transformed. So that's all about what God has been doing in the life of the believers. It's a lot, what God has been doing. But we're also making commitments when we're being baptized. We're making commitments. We're committing to not only repent of sin once when we become Christians, but throughout our lives looking to be shaped into the image of the perfect Christ, the perfect Jesus. And so we are repenting. We're committing ourselves to repent of sin and to continue to turn away from it. We're continuing to um, seek to be washed and cleansed by God. You know, here's the great thing about the gospel. It is freedom. A relationship with Jesus means no matter what you've done in the past, no matter how broken you've been, no matter how you have been abused or hurt or torn down, no matter what has happened to you, when you become a Christian, you are freed from all of that. It's gone. It's done. It's over. It's paid for. It's done. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know? Now, the rest of your life as a believer is living in that truth, living in that and experiencing that washing, that cleansing once again. It's declaring your intention to walk in a new life. Baptism is also a confession. It's a confession of faith that Jesus is your king. He is your Lord. He is your ruler. You will listen to him, and whatever he says, you'll do. That, that's what that kind of commitment that these people are making today in their baptism. They won't follow another way. There is one way. It's a narrow way. And I'm going to live my life that way for the rest of time. And, and that, means, that means I'm also committing to read this book because there's no clearer message to us about what God wants us to do or how he wants us to live than what we find right here. So we're committing to get this. I would say get, you want to get it in your head, but more importantly, you want to get it in your heart. You want to memorize it. You want to read it regularly. You want to be transformed by this reading. So that's a commitment. Jesus as king in your life means that you listen to what he says. And you stand for its truth that we read here. You're committing to let everybody know that Jesus is your king. That you follow Christ. It's so exciting to be here today to be participating uh, and witnessing baptism. And I tell you, friends, I really need this right now because I am so tired of all of the bad stuff that we hear about in the news, right? There's difficult times we're going through right now. I hope the whole COVID thing and going to red, man, I'm so tired of it. So it's wonderful to come here and get this ray, this sunshine of hope that God is at work no matter what's going on in the world. No matter what is happening today, no matter how hard you've been pressed, no matter how you've been pushed down, we know that God is at work at Lakeshore St. Andrews. Amen? Amen. God is at work. He is. Yes, thank you. God is doing good things, and we are so excited to participate in that. God is at work. People are choosing to follow him. What a wonderful message of hope that I know I need and I know that you need today. Let us pray. Holy God, we're so thankful that you're at work. When so many tough things are happening around us, Lord, it is such a joy to witness the power of your spirit in this place. I pray that you'd fill every person here every person being baptized, Lord, with a sense of your powerful spirit moving in them and that we would be led to bring glory to you. Amen.
we wanted to sing a song, uh, the Creed. It's the Nicene Creed, and you may have you may have said it many times over if you were raised in certain traditions. And it's just a reminder. It's a back to basics of what we believe as Christ followers, and this is what we believe in.
Hi, my name is Jennifer. I've been coming to Lakeshore for 10 years. Um, a couple co-workers were members here, so both of them actually invited me to come to the service. Um, I was talking to you about doing the Alpha course that I did at another church, and my friend, she invited me to come, but also said, did you want to come and do Alpha with me? So that's what brought me here. Why do I want to be baptized? Um, because I'm a believer and um, the Lord tells us to be baptized if you believe and share your story with other people. I actually said to Deb, I wanted to get baptized. I, so it probably would be at least five years ago. Um, I knew that I wanted to get baptized because I knew I was a believer and my family who lives in another town um, my niece was getting baptized and I went up for a visit that weekend. It was so amazing to be able to watch my niece at, I think she was 13 years old, go up there in front of the entire church and do this. It was, I was so proud of her. Well, having a baby has definitely been a blessing from God. Um, it is so amazing. I cannot even believe that God granted me this little boy. Um, so yeah, it, it certainly, it's testimony that God, um, God knows what he wants for you in life. And um, through this little boy, I hope to raise him up to be a Christ follower as well. You know, teaching him to love other people, to pray for other people, to help other people. Um, all of those things that God calls us to do, I want to be able to show and teach him how to be a better person, how to be a Christian, and how to help. I think the biggest thing is help other people. I think that just in, encompasses so many different things. Um, that word is helping other people, which my spiritual gift was help, so. Um, so uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 sums up what it means to me to be a Christian. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. I feel you just know in your heart and it's something that you want to do. But to help someone else do it or encourage them through it, I think just talking them through it, that this is an act that you're doing to honor God. And he is so happy that you have made this commitment to do it. He will love you no matter what. If you think you're not ready, you probably are ready just because of the fact that you're wavering. Um, everyone's good enough to be baptized. If you say, I believe, you can get baptized and show God how much you love him. And based on the personal confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody knows me as Barb Z, so that's me. And um, in 2003, Shirley Reno said, Barb, why don't you come to my church? She said, you'll love it. 
Well, I came the first time and, and I wasn't used to the, the way this was run here. It wasn't like the church my dad and I went to. So it was like I was not comfortable. So Shirley says, okay, come at the first of the year, 2004. So I did. Lo and behold, the pastor was talking to me. The whole series was about me. <laughs> and that's what happens. I'll, I'll have people come and they'll say, that was for me. <laughs> It happens every time. <laughs> um, like I said to Connie and Deb yesterday, I'm not afraid, you know? Like, I'm not afraid of the future because I know God's got a plan. He's gonna set it up for me. It may not be something I want, but he knows what's best for me. Well, you, you know, the water isn't supposed to be the end all, but it's like when you're drowning in life, then you come back up alive. You're, everybody uses this phrase, reborn. And it's overused, but you're, you're, everything's washed. You're clean and you're starting again. It doesn't matter what you know other than you know who the king is, that Jesus will save us no matter what. We, we don't need to know the Bible off by heart. We don't need to pray in big voices on the street corners. Just talk to God. That's all we have to do. And the comfort that you feel from doing that will move you over the fence. I'm an, if, if I love something, whether it be a special kind of donut or, or God or a car or whatever, if I love something, I blast it on people. Everybody hears it. And, um, the two people that I brought to Christ were down, really down. And my enthusiasm got them going. And um, now they're, they're reading their Bible more than I do. <laughs> I'm putting my faith in God and Deb and Connie that they can raise me up out of the water. And um, I've been coming to Lakeshore for almost 20 years now, which is really hard to believe considering I think I'm 29. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, Deb Toth, um, you know, invited me to the church when I was her next door neighbor and uh, very unfamiliar to attending church and uh, what a church family felt like. Um, so it's been a very on and off process through the years since then. Uh, in all honesty, you know, I've had a lot of you know, things as everybody does in their life that are personal challenges and struggles and sometimes you know the decisions I've made in my life have 
drawn me away from my journey. I don't think I was ever really uh, gone for a long period of time. It was just uh, how serious was I about, you know, the decisions I was making in my life and choosing a life, um, you know, following hard after after God and, and, you know, accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior and living that out. You know, I think that's where my, um, in my life, it's kind of, I've been in and out of my devotion to that. Um, I remember I was, you know, struggling with a situation and I met with Connie and uh, we met in her office here after service and she uh, prayed over me. She prayed the prayer of salvation and it was that moment. It was that moment where you feel like the floodgates opened and you cry and you don't know why and I felt warm and I just felt um, surrounded with love and peace and I felt like um, a big weight that I had carried on my shoulders was lifted off me, like it was okay. Like I, it was okay to let it go. It happened in her office that way. And you know, I guess having been going to church for like probably 15 years at that time on and off and hearing about different people's experiences and personal moments, it was like, you know, is that ever gonna happen? Am I gonna feel that? I don't know, I don't really, maybe not. Maybe it's not that way for everybody. So I really didn't expect it, you know? Over the years, I've watched the baptism ceremonies here, and they've been very heartwarming, and I've loved to watch the videos and see people's journey and how excited and lit up they are about uh, their journey with God. But um, I always prayed about it when I had the invitation, and it didn't feel right. And I also knew that there was some things in my life that I needed to work on and overcome so that I didn't stand before God and the church family and make promises that I knew I couldn't keep. Um, the invitation came again this year, and I prayed about it and I waited. And I just, I guess if I could describe it, it felt like a nudge, like, you know what, Kim, go for it, do this. This is good for you. I know I'm gonna fall, I know I'm gonna try to take the driver's seat again, but then I'm gonna realize that I need to let him lead, I need to make my way back, and we'll continue to walk together. And that's really all I hope for in my baptism, is just to continue my journey for the rest of my days with, with Jesus. Um, my name is Carol McKenzie. I've been coming to LAC for one year and seven months. I, I was never a Christian. I've, I wasn't brought up in a Christian household. I maybe went to Sunday school now and again um, with a neighbor when I was a child. But my daughter-in-law, she's from Brazil and her English wasn't very good. So I was looking for things to do with her and stuff places to take her really. So I knew that when she was in Brazil that she went to church. So I thought, perfect. My friend, I have an old neighbor who goes to church all the time. So I said, would you mind bringing us just to bring Bruna to give, give us something to do really that she would maybe like. So we came to church with my old neighbor and that day the pastor was speaking to me. And I, I cried and I'm like, oh, what on earth is happening to me? You know, and since that day, I'm like, wow, that, that was amazing what he was speaking about. So my, my friend says, would you like to, they're doing an alpha course here in Lakeshore, St. Andrews, would you like to come along? I said, I don't know. 
And then I said, she says, well, come once. If you don't like it, you don't have to come back. So I came along and I joined Alpha and my life changed from that day. I felt that I always could turn to him rather than like before you'd go to friends and you'd see all your problems and nobody could really ever help you. But now like, I feel that I have Jesus now and that I just talk to him and it makes me feel so much better. I like to connect uh, through God through worship. Like I listen, plus podcasts. I listen to lots of Christian podcasts and I just like to hear the stories of the books of the Bible. Like I'm, I'm eager to know all the stories and like Matthew, Mark. So I listen to podcasts and I also listen to a lot of songs. That's what really hits my heart. I feel that I've already have received the Holy Spirit as the minute I became Christian, like going to Alpha and, and I have this great feeling in my heart, full of love for people that before I never ever felt like that. And now I feel that I've been baptised in the Holy Spirit. I feel I need to be baptised with water now. And my daughter in Scotland, before, she was like me before, she would never want to hear anything about God and Jesus. And, and now she's like in, interested and she's asking me questions. And, Mum, will you send me that song? What was that song that you were telling me about? Will you send me that song? And, and my wee granddaughter, she says, Mum, she says, Carly sits and listens to that, um, these worship songs all the time and loves them. And that's my wee granddaughter. Whereas before they would never heard that from anybody. I would just like to say that um, Jesus is this, in my eyes, I feel that Jesus is this wonderful spirit in my heart that makes me feel good and makes me be filled with love. Carol, based on your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Jen Kruger, and I've been attending LSA for four years. So my son Hunter is two years old, and when I had him, he changed my world. And my priorities have shifted. Prior to that, work was pretty well everything to me. And being back at work following my maternity leave, realized how much of a priority he is in my life. One day I was bringing Hunter into the nursery and had a guest registration for him previously and they told me to fill out this regular attendee paperwork and I really felt like I was becoming a part of the family then. My first real acceptance, I guess, of God into my life was after a conversation with Deb Toth, my friend. and. She, she was, just, we were talking about a message that had been heard the Sunday previous and what I had got out of it and I mentioned that every Sunday that I attend the message was exactly what I needed to hear and I've had that experience for years even at um, other churches that I've attended and you know I still didn't believe necessarily and she pointed out to me that that was God putting those messages in my path and, and letting me hear exactly what I needed to hear. I, do, I, don't, I don't remember exactly when it all clicked for me, but around Easter, I watched The Passion of the Christ because I really wanted to see what Jesus did for us. And I 
I know I was already ready by then. I had fully accepted and acknowledged and really appreciated him for, for what he did for us. And I mean, this baptism was supposed to happen six months ago. Um, so I have been ready for a long time, but as I've gone through this though, I want to shout from the rooftops my love for Jesus. And I was scared to share my faith with people for fear of judgment because I'm coming into this at 30 years old and I felt like I wasn't able to defend my faith. And since then I've realized that no one is attacking my faith, but it's mine to freely share. And it's such an amazing experience that why wouldn't I want to share this with everyone else? I've really been intentional about sharing my love of God and Jesus with Hunter and trying to instill good Christian values in him. And Deb had pointed out too early on in this journey that God loved Hunter enough to put this on my heart to become a Christian so that he could be raised that way. And I just think that that's an incredible thing, the way that God works. My, my relationship with God made me start looking at my life and valuing myself because I realized that He loves me no matter what, just the way that I am. I always felt like I needed to be better, do more, achieve more, and I don't. I thought I was a confident person before, but I realized that that confidence was a defense mechanism, masking my deep insecurities. And God's love has really softened those insecurities. And I am a more secure person and I'm secure in my identity in Christ. And through that, I've been able to have more open conversations with my family, with people at work and develop really meaningful, intentional relationships. So I'm ready to make my public declaration of my love for Jesus and go on this discipleship journey with him. Ready? <laughs> Based on your confession, Based on your confession in the Lord Christ Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Abby. I've been going to the church for 12 years and I'm also 12 years old. So I didn't used to go to chaos a lot in grade five. Kind of thought it was like boring or something. I don't really remember why I didn't go. Um, then grade six, I started going. Um, and I really liked how I felt so connected to everyone there. And I wanted to actually take what I was learning and do something with that. So I started to do that and try and apply what people were saying to like my life. And I just realized that I want others to know that I want to be, I, I am a Christian and I want God to be with me and I want to be able to have him there to comfort me and help me and support me. But so I remember driving home, my mom was driving me home from chaos that night and I was like, oh, Shane said they're going to do baptisms. But I was like too scared to say, hey, can I be baptized? Because like, I, how do you say that? Um, so then I told, I said the same thing to my dad, chicken dad again, trying to say it. Um, but I guess my mom, I think she asked me, like, hey, are you thinking of getting baptized? And I'm like, yeah. 
So I tried to find you and blah, 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 you know the rest of that story. Um, so when I said that, my sister, we were at, this was like at walking out of a or something, I remember. She was like, oh, I want to be baptized too. And I was like, I'm kind of scared. She was like, yeah, it's fine. Um, I like to pray a lot because also like thanking him and just knowing that he's there to listen to you all the time, they kind of work side by side. Like I find myself thanking him a lot and it feels good to thank him. And it's nice to be able to recognize the things that you're thanking him for and then to be able to know that he's there always to listen to. Just because it's a way to get anything out and you can say absolutely anything. And if you say something wrong, it's fine. You just say, whoops, sorry. Or you don't even have to say that. You can just keep on talking. And it's great to know because it's, like, it's not like a person-to-person -person conversation where you have to you know, be a little bit polite and like make sure you're not like saying too much. And I say that there's an art form to talking, but when you're with God, you can just say anything. And that's really nice. These, these aren't just stories. They're not just good morals you learn. Like, these are ancient stories and amazing miracles that are here to help you. And God is there and he's just waiting. And basically it's up to you. And just being able to have that trust in him, um, it kind of just, I don't know, came alive, I guess. And it was there and I was like, yeah, I, I need this. Um, so I want to be baptized because I want others to know that I want God with me in my life and I want to be with him and this is what I want my life to be. And that's why I want to be baptized. <laughs> Abby, based on your confession and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hold your hand. Ready? Julia Bockwell. I'm 15 years old. I've been coming to LSA since I was a baby, so 15 and three quarter years. Yeah, my parents moved here in 2004 from Woodstock and they looked for a church, tried out a couple, found LSA and just decided that's where we're gonna go and there we've been there my whole life, so. Uh, about two years ago I started, like we were watching baptisms on Easter I think, and I was like, I didn't really know all that much about it. I didn't really know what it meant other than what they've explained a little bit at the beginning and I kind of decided like I want to know more about this like I want to I want to go and ask questions so I was asking my parents like oh what does it mean and like I'm kind of interested in this and then I don't think I actually decided until my sister did because she was like hey I want to do this and I was like you know what I want to too, but I didn't have the initiative to, to make that decision myself. And I'm not saying she made the decision for me, but I'm saying that her initiative helped me get, take the initiative to decide on my own. Well, right now I decided that I wanted to be baptized because I've really become a lot closer to God these last couple years, especially. Like I really took what I'd been learning my entire life, what I'd been told my entire life, and I believed everything I'd ever been taught in church and from my family and at home, but I'd never really made it my own. Like it never felt like it belonged to me. Like it never felt like my relationship with God belonged solely on me. So in grade eight, I went through this really weird time where I didn't really, I can't describe it. It felt like I was sinking. You know, I was just sinking and I didn't know what was pulling me down. So. I think the only way I ever got through that was just praying and like my relationship with God got so much stronger in that time because I was praying to him all the time every day like God give me strength God get me through this 
There was this song we used to sing in Kids Cove when I was little, and it was, the Lord is my strength and my shield, my rock and my salvation. With my song, I will praise him. And that was just like my mantra. Like I just sang that so often because the Lord was my strength and he got me through that. And after that, I just came out of that thinking like, wow, I know God put me through that really weird time um, to strengthen my relationship with him. And I was like, wow, like there's no way I can ever live life without him. I don't know why I tried. Like, I don't know how I even got along without him in the first place. Yeah, I like to like close the door, put on my music and dance and pray at the same time. And it's incredible because you can just do exactly what the music is telling you to do, but then you can say exactly what you want to say and feel exactly what you want to say. And so putting it all together is a really powerful way to connect with God. After spending 15 years of my life knowing about God and learning everything I can at church about God and at home, this is finally where I am with my life that I've decided to take these next steps and be baptized because I know that this is what God wants me to do and I know that I can do it and this is where my life's going. All right, Julia, based on your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What's your names? What a wonderful experience uh, to be participating in that. Now you're wondering, you've already been baptized, so you don't have to think about having to do this yourself, and you're probably like, I'm glad, that was scary, that'd be scary. But here, here's the thing, there was a witness that happened here that said, if you've been baptized and you're a believer, start living it out. He is your king, he is your Lord, and it's your job now to follow in that path, to walk just as they've decided to walk. If you're a Christian who hasn't been baptized, I think this is a challenge to you. Maybe a little, it's a little bit of a poke to say, maybe I need to be baptized as well because you're a disciple of Jesus. And the very first thing he told disciples was be baptized. So if you're finding yourself getting off that narrow way, maybe part of the way back is to say, I'm going to follow Jesus' command to be baptized if you're not a believer here today. The reality is, is that you're lost and you're dead in your sins, but here's the good news. Jesus Christ has died for you and he's calling you to confess your sins, to receive new life from him, and if you call out to him, you confess your sins, you ask him to save you, guaranteed 100%, he will save you. And then you're going to be able to join me one of these days up on this platform. And you too will be baptized. Praise God. Amen. I'm on my knees again But God, I'm begging Please again I need you Oh, I need you I'm walking down These desert roads Water for my thirsty soul I need you Oh, God, I need you Your forgiveness like sweet, sweet honey on 
Sweet, sweet. 